Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to show you how to create this cracking texture and flow it really nicely with the Rhinos 3D software. Are you ready? Let's get started. To making this texture, we're going to dissect it into each of the piece. As you can see, I'm going to delete all of this and just show you this part right here. As you can see, let's take a look on the ghost view. It looks like we have a square and it's being uh, lift up on all the corners right here. You need to maintain the square structure in order for it to be a continual piece, right? So that's starting with this component right here from scratch. Many people may feel right now it's difficult but I do have a way to make it simpler and that's just because I know how to dissect the foam instead of looking at all like an overall foam I need to dissect into the segment and that way will help you to analyze it. In this case we have a square here and I'm going to explode them, right? If you try to move a control point on this shape you're going to see that it is only like moving one spot and that's not what we wanted to do. So the first things first, let's go ahead to rebuild all this curve. We currently is in a degree one and we need to have it in a degree three. I have a video talk about the important between the degree one, two and three curve. Um, if you are interesting that you can check it out. Okay. And I want a point to be more points so I can moving around. So let's do that. And if you turn on the control point now, you can see I have a lot more point right there. Right. Um, you can do is you can moving all those points going up. So let's say we want to move up for two, right? So you see that beautiful curve here. And then I also gonna moving this up for two. So then I have this, right? Imagine that if I have this as a surface, for example, and then I have this surface, if I polar array this guy for four, four of them, 360 degree and I can get this really interesting shape right there. But the thing is we need to have it cracking. We need to have it crack up, right? So instead of doing that, we need to moving those points specific on those two. We need to have them, whatever is higher there, I will need to have them move it back. So I'm going to pick up the point right here. I'm going to move it back for minus one and move it up for one. So then it's shrink it a little, not a shrink it, it's like moving toward to the body a little bit, right? So I want it to be continuous. So I need to have the same thing doing on this side. So I'm gonna turn on the control point. I'm going to move it minus one here and also move it one here, opposite direction. So now we have something like this. Right now, if we turning into the surface, that's using the surface from two, three, four edges curve, and then we pick up all of them. This will be our surface again. Uh, I'm going to using this one, and let's do the polar array for four of them, and we'll get something like this. Right, and if I have this one, and I just uh, mirror to the other side, I just want to give you an idea. Uh, if I just mirror to the other side and I will get something like that. So that is the cracking for what we are looking for, right? So this is the pattern. Now we need to turn it into the solid. So let's go ahead to offset this guy and I'm going to offset the surface and I'm going to offset down for whatever thickness, just need to make sure solid equal yes there. All right, so now we have this one we can creating our pattern and the same way that I would create, just create it. Like from this point, I need to four of them and uh, we can continue to pick up those. And again, we're gonna using this point for four of them. And then you can grow them pretty fast. You just need to make sure that, you know, I'm gonna do it one more time and four, okay. All right, so that's good enough. Um, I wanted to show you, oh, actually, I wanted to be looking like awesome. So then I wanted to 
to four. I shouldn't do it because I know when I try to flow it back to the surface, it's going to be like taking a really long time. So let's go ahead to hiding the curve, original curve there. So let's say I have a surface and the surface is going to be something like this from here to here. For this surface, I'm just going to make it slightly bigger so that can cover all of them. All right. And I also going to make a copy to it here. Let's say I have a surface and this surface on my perspective, I'm going to rebuild it and to get a lot more point. So maybe seven and seven and then need to make sure the degree is three. So this surface is not flat. Let's say this is the design surface we are going to have. And I, I simply just going to make them a bit, a bit irregular. For example, like a, this dip down a little bit more and this is kind of going up something like this, right? So it's not, it's not a flat surface, something like, like this. All right. And I need to have this texture instead of flat and I need to go on, follow the surface, right? So the things that we are going to do is we are going to use the command called flow along surface It's under the transform that you can do. Uh, flow along surface or you can just type it there. Okay. It's going to ask you which object. So we're going to pick up all the object that we have. It's going to ask you where's the base surface. We're going to pick up this one. Where's the target surface. We're going to pick up this one and let it run. So you're going to see it is uh, hopping on the surface nicely. The same technique can be applied to many different industries. If you're interested in learning the Rhino 3D software more in depth, please check out my course, Jury Cat Master Class, where I also provide a private group coaching that I will guide you through all your questions myself. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next.